the Rakhine everyone. My name is Jagdish Shetty and I'm from Naranthi Super Specialty Hospital. And I welcome you all to the live health chat from Naranthi Super Specialty Hospital. Now, the topic for today is no more about surgical management of brain stroke. Now, to talk about this, we have Dr. Rajan Shah, who is the Director and Head of Neurosurgery, Naranthi Super Specialty Hospital, Mumbai. Now, Dr. Rajan Shah has got 30 years of experience in Mumbai. And his special interest is management of cerebral strokes with more than 450 cerebral aneurysm surgeries. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Now, we'll start with the question and answer sessions. Now, the first question here is, what is a comprehensive stroke center? How is it different from a nursing home or tertiary care hospital, sir? When we say comprehensive stroke center, which means when the patient arrives and is suspected to have stroke, he should be managed completely for that. So starting from the accident emergency department where a suspicion of stroke is raised and with that suspicion immediately uh, uh, protocol is sort of started where the patient goes for imaging, either a CT scan or MRI depending on the protocols of that particular issue. And once the stroke is confirmed, then the patient should go for intravenous thrombolysis okay. and be prepared for an intervention for, for arterial uh, obtaining of the clot from the arteries. Okay. And if required, the patient also can go for a surgical management and have an ICU where surgical stroke patients are treated. So, an institute where all these facilities are available under one roof, starting from emergency. Imaging facilities, ability to give thrombolysis, ability to re retrieve the clots from the major blood vessels of the brain, and surgical management they need. So, this is called as a comprehensive stroke management. Thank you so much, sir. Now, the second question is why is stroke incidence increasing in younger population? Primarily, this is because of the lifestyle changes which patients have gone for. Okay. Now, you know, basically in our lifestyle, one is of alcohol, then uh, smoking. Okay. The third thing is lack of exercises. True. Fourth is, you know, uh, ingesting the high fat diet, especially the junk food which one is taking. True. So there's a lot of fat in that. Then a lot of stress factors because of which the blood pressure goes haywire. Also, patients, in fact, they, they think that they, they're invincible, so they try and ignore certain symptoms. Sure. Also, uh, you know, uh, the because of the stress factors, the blood sugars go high, the fat levels go high, high cholesterol diet, so these are all the risk factors for stroke. So the younger patients, Develop so because of this risk factors. And of course, there can be some congenital problems and problems of getting diabetes and hypertension. Okay. And what is prognosis for stroke? Can stroke damage the reverse through surgery? The prognosis of stroke depends on the area of the brain which is involved. And this is the, the cause for maximum disabilities in the patients. So it is always better to prevent a stroke rather than treat a stroke. The surgery is basically for the management of the complications of stroke. So if the patient has developed a stroke, then the complications can be raised with the pressure which needs to be treated by the surgical team. Then if the patient has developed uh, hemorrhage, which is because of the aneurysms, then a second hemorrhage should be prevented by obliteration of the aneurysm because that can you know cause high mortality if the patient develops a second hemorrhage. So that is the that is the way the surgery will sort of reduce the mobility in the patient with stroke. Now we have a question here from Ayunja Das. Can someone survive a brain stroke? Oh more often than not they survive brain stroke. It is uh, Essentially, the patients develop disabilities. The chances of mortality in stroke is not very high, but they develop a significant disability. And this disability 
is what is the problem for the patients who develop stroke. Okay, I'm sure um, I have got an answer to this. Uh, what are some surgical treatment options for stroke management? Basically, as I said, that surgery for stroke is for for uh, you know complications of the stroke. So basically, the complications can be raised intracranial pressure, which becomes a cause of mortality. And to reduce this complication, we have surgeries to one evacuate the blood clots if there are clots within the brain causing high pressure, or give a window for the swelling in the brain. If there is a stroke in a large part of the brain and there's a lot of swelling, which causes high intracranial pressure because the container of the brain, which is the skull, is a fixed cavity. And when there is swelling, there is no space for the swelling and the normal brain gets compressed. And because of that, there can be risk to life. So to reduce the risk to life, we open up the skull and give space for the swollen brain, what we call it as the compressive craniotomy, which is the opening of the skull to, to give the compression for the brain. Okay. Now we have a more question here uh, from Namita Das. Can brain repair itself after stroke? Like all the organs, our brain also has some, uh, you know, repair abilities, but there's a lot of restriction in the uh, repair abilities. So there can be partial recovery of the functions which are lost immediately after the stroke, okay. but generally this recovery is not 100%. So there is some disabilities which do remain with these patients who have suffered the stroke. And as I again said, that it depends on the part of the brain which is involved. You know, a small brain called the cerebellum, if that is involved, there can be only certain imbalance problems. But if the major hemispheres are right or the left hemispheres are involved, then there can be function loss depending on which hemisphere is involved. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, again, there's a question from Ayanija Das. What is the best treatment for stroke? That depends on what type of stroke. So if there is ischemic stroke, which means there is a less blood supply to the brain, then there has to be thrombolysis, which may be intravenous if the patient arrives in the hospital within the first three to six hours, which is sort of the window for administering that. But that, of course, is done by a neurophysician. I'm a neurosurgeon. Okay. The second would be if there is a major blood vessel which is involved, which is being blocked by the blood clot, then there are retrieval methods for this blood clot and re-establishing the blood supply to the uh, stroked out brain that can improve the chances of uh, diminishing the disability from the stroke. And then, if there is a complication of brain significant tension, then the surgery comes into picture. And of course, when we talk of subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a type of hemorrhage which is caused by a balloon in the blood vessels of the brain, what is called as aneurysm. So this aneurysm has the potential of a second bleed. So to prevent the second bleed, we need to take care of this aneurysm or what we call as obliteration of the aneurysm, which can be done either surgically or by endovascular procedures, which we'll talk about. Okay. Now there's one more question from Kashish Singh Dev. Can you live a normal life after a stroke? Generally, there is some disabilities. It uh, could be in the form of weakness on one side, which can be form of some visual problems, it can be change of behavior, it can be confusion, some sort of cognitive dysfunctions or imbalance. So they may not have a 100% normal life, but they can become independent in daily living more often than not. However, it also depends on which part of the brain is involved, as I've been saying again and again, because each part of the brain has some functions. So which brain part is stroked out, the functional loss will depend on that. Okay. Uh, now there's one question for, from Abu Bakr. So, so what are the causes of brain cancer? Brain cancer, of course, we are uh, sort of uh, drifting away from our main topic today. Yes, but we really don't know what are the causes of the brain cancer, like any other cancer. Uh, there can be some genetic predisposition, but
but it is not necessarily the cause of uh, brain cancer. We have some genetic mutation which happens in our body which predisposes us to brain, brain cancer, but again, there is no definite known cause for the brain cancers. Okay. And how does aneurysm, clipping, and coiling work? See, as I have been saying, that one of the forms of stroke is brain hemorrhage, which is called as subarachnoid hemorrhage, okay. which means is a diffuse hemorrhage all around and base of the brain. So, which this hemorrhage can give rise to some complications like vasospasm and ischemic strokes. But main the main problem for this patient is this aneurysm, which may be existing for years together. Once it has ruptured or burst open, causing the brain hemorrhage, the risk of a second hemorrhage from this aneurysm for the first two weeks is extremely high, is almost 30%. Okay. And if there is a second hemorrhage, the risk to life is more than 50-60%. So before the second hemorrhage occurs, we need to close this aneurysm. So to close the aneurysm, there are two techniques. One is endovascular process where we sort of put in the coils and support the weak wall of the aneurysm mm -hmm. or there is surgical clipping where we open the skull, go to the aneurysm and put a clip at the base of the aneurysm so as to eliminate this aneurysm from circulation. This, it is like, a, you know, unless a balloon is bloated up, only then it can rupture, but when it is deflated, when it is a deflated balloon cannot rupture. Similarly, aneurysm which has been deflated by putting a clip at the neck of the aneurysm. So there is no blood circulation in the aneurysm, so there is no pressure in the aneurysm, so it cannot rupture again. Okay. Uh, Niharika God has got a question. What nutrition and diet should be followed for fast recovery? Uh, I am not the best person to answer this question. The nutritionist can answer. However, I can only tell you that this, uh, the nutrition value should be more of prevention of problems like diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, high fat. So this should be avoided and a nutritious diet has to be done. But again, as I said, I am not the best person to answer this question. Uh, sir, can you tell us a little bit about uh, clock -like? Again, I'm not the best person because this is done by the endovascular uh, person. There are some neurologists and neurophysicians or, I mean, or radiologists who have been doing this. Some neurosurgeons also do this. But I do not have much of experience. But I can just give you a simple thing what we do. They, what they do is they put a catheter going through the artery, going up to from the groin. And this catheter is pushed up to the artery in the brain which has been clotted, which has been blocked by the clot. Okay. And there are retrieval ways to hold that clot and bring it out or suck the clot out and open up the blood vessels. This is what is being done. Uh, but as I mentioned, I, am, I do not do this procedure. So, so this is being done by the intervention radiologists. Uh, can a stroke survival lead a normal life? I think we have already sort of looked at this question. Uh, they may not have 100% normal life, okay. but most of them come back to, you know, an independent life of daily living. But they may not be able to go back to their original profession. Of course, there are small, small number, lucky ones who can go. But this is again, we are talking about the patients who have developed a stroke. There is a stroke which is what we call less transient ischemic attacks where there is a warning or a minor stroke and where there is no significant damage to the brain or actually there is no damage to the brain following this episode what we call less transient ischemic attacks. Okay. These are the patients who go back to their normal life but they run a very high risk of developing another stroke in the near future. So these are the patients who should be treated to prevent the strokes. There are multiple options to prevent the strokes. First of, the, first of them would be change of lifestyle, control of blood pressure, control of diabetes, reducing the cholesterol, giving them antiplatelet drugs. If there is a major blood vessel which is narrowed, 
then they can be bypassed using either a stent or something called as carotid and artrectomy where we take away the uh, the atheroma within the blood vessel which is sort of narrowing the blood vessels so these are multiple ways of reducing the risk of stroke in these patients who are at a high risk of strokes and when they develop a TIA, which may be a precursor to a major stroke. And is there any pattern for this, like you know, the stroke happens in the early morning or early night? Or... Uh, there is no such definite pattern which is there. But there can be strokes, uh, you know, after a heavy meal, okay. that is a possibility. And any myth or fact about the brain stroke? Myth or yeah. facts? Um, I don't think there is any sort of myths and facts. Okay, okay. Uh, so, any interesting case uh, that you might want to talk about uh, recent generated, uh, recently operated on brain stroke? Uh, just sometimes the brain stroke can be because of multi, I mean if there are multiple uh, sort of pathologies in the brain which can give rise to brain hemorrhages. One of them we have spoken of is the aneurysms. There can be other uh, defects, what we call it arteriovenous malformation, uh, which can be by birth, and there is a weak wall in this uh, malformation, which can suddenly rupture open and cause an intracellular hemorrhage. Then there, there are, uh, you know, pathology what we call as cavernoma. So again, they are by, by birth, but they have a weak wall and suddenly it can sort of burst open on that particular day. We do not know the reason why it happens on that particular day. So they are there by, from birth and then cause an hemorrhage. So, you know, when we get these patients with hemorrhages, we can evacuate the blood clot, reduce the metal pressure and excise uh, these malformations to prevent future episodes of hemorrhage. Okay. And is there any age format uh, in this? Like the strokes is common in the 6th and 7th decade. However, in the recent past, we have seen more and more uh, strokes in the younger patients. In fact, there was a study which they looked up. So between 95 and 2005 and 2005 to 2015, these two decades were studied. They found there's almost 28% increase in stroke rates in the patients below the age of 45, which is considered to be a uh, stroke in young. Uh, and so what happens, uh, this has been raised by Kashish again, what happens in the first three days after the stroke? Uh, you know, generally after, you know, the patient has developed a stroke, in the first three to four days, the patient can develop swelling and that is the area where the patient can develop a complication because of waist pressure and they may need surgical treatment. So they need, one is, uh, Keep a close watch if they are developing high pressure in the brain, which can be detrimental to their life and may need surgical treatment, options for treatment. Other thing is, from the very beginning, we need to start control of blood pressure, control of diabetes, start them on a rehabilitation program, uh, nutrition should be started well. So these are all the things which will reduce the morbidity in the patient and of course reduce the mortality also. If all these complications are treated well in time. So, but of course, there is no such first three days because every patient's response to the stroke is going to be different. Some patients deteriorate on the second, third day. Some patients can deteriorate even after seventh or eighth day. But yes, majority of the patients can deteriorate in the first two or three days after the stroke. And uh, so, so what are the chances of brain stroke after drug surgery? That depends on the condition of the patients when the patient goes for surgery. There is something called coma score. It goes by the name of Glasgow Coma Score, where uh, the score is between 3 and 15. 3 
other patients who have had significant brain damage and there are no brain functions which are noted. And 15 is a normal score which all of us have. So if the patient needs surgery and a coma score of more than 9 or 10, then the chances of survival is significantly high, which may be almost nearing 90%. But when the coma score is below that, which means there is more damage. I mean, higher the damage, lower the coma score. So when there is a low coma score, the chances of survival starts dropping in. And of course, if the patient is at coma score of 3 or 4, the chances of survival at 3 will be almost nil. And even at 4 would be very, very low. And of course, if they survive, the chances of having a significant morbidity or disabilities would be high. Is there any tips that you want to give to the university? One is don't ignore the symptoms, symptoms of stroke. There is an acronym which is be fast. So what it means is B stands for imbalance, so balance issues, E for I, then vision issues, F for facial asymmetry, A would be for the limb weakness, S would stand for speech impairment, and T signifies that do not ignore them and look for treatment at the earliest possible. So any patients who have any of the symptoms should be taken to the hospital which is stroke ready so that we can prevent mortality and reduce the morbidity, morbidity to these patients. So disabilities are minimum and they can get back to their functional life to the nearest possible. Okay, no, uh, one more question from Niyarika. When the temperature goes down of uh, the right side skull and pain started, is it related to brain stroke or due to some other reason? No, temperature is not related to the brain stroke. It has got nothing to do with the When the temperature in the local area goes up, which may suggest that there is an inflammation or infection in that area, but there is no temperature change in the patients with cerebral stroke on the surface. Uh, there's no more questions coming up. Uh, I thank you so much for joining today's uh, Facebook Live. Uh, thank you so much thank you. Sir, for taking your time. Thank you. Stay tuned.